Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephanie Nissen. I am the program manager for Elastics for Students and Educators program, um, which is part of Elastic Community, um, which two of my colleagues here today are part, also part of that team. Um, so we're really excited to be here um, just to kind of introduce you uh, to Elastic. We recognize most students have never heard of us, and that is okay. Um, but you'll be surprised to learn that you have all probably used Elastic in some way. Um, so so we'll talk a little bit about the different ways in which you've used it. Um, we'll provide you kind of with an overview of some of our products um, so that you kind of are, you know, just a little bit more familiar because we are an open source company. You actually have access to all of our products. Um, if you choose to download or if you start a free um, cloud trial. And I, I will put that in the chat um, once I'm done speaking. Um, so just a little bit about the program that I lead. Um, it's like I said, an arm of community. So community at Elastic is really all about engaging and educating um, our users, whether they are paying to be users and their customers or they're just using it kind of out in the wild um, for various projects or you know something related to their work. Um, we work to bring them together um, for, you know, to kind of connect them to talk about and share what they do. So Elastic for Students and Educators um, is an arm of that just dedicated to students and educators in higher education. And so we support uh, students um, by providing things like access to Elastic Cloud or um, perhaps, you know, an on-prem license. Um, we work with instructors to give free training and support if they're looking to develop an Elastic course or bring it into their classroom. Um, we host a lot of student focused presentations like the one you'll see today. Um, and then some that are, you know, uh, just kind of free to all students. Um, just take note, there's a QR code there. We're hosting um, a boot camp at the end of this month. It's just a three part virtual series, just three sessions, one hour each, that will really um, build upon what you learned today that will kind of introduce you to Elastic, will get you actually using the products um, and we'll end with a, a workshop that you're actually building an app. Um, and so it's a really just a good taste of kind of um, what Elastic can do, but also provides you a little bit of um, skills building. Um, so, we also work to kind of help to bring you into our community, our larger community, um, where you can kind of network, start to grow your network, connect with um, users in industry, as well as just Elastic engineers and just learn a little bit about it. So we recognize really that Elastic is um, a skill set that is in high demand out in the workforce. If you haven't heard of it yet, you might later. And so we just really want to expose students to Elastic, um, help them to um, be able to use our products and learn how to use Use them really just to make you you know more employable to help bring you out into industry and, and kind of give you um that you know upper that edge on the competition type of thing so um so like i said um you can definitely use that uh qr code um to sign up for that boot camp but i'll also put the link in the chat um we also are here today we'll give you um, a free 30-day cloud trial um and phoebe will talk a little bit about um you know maybe what's in that um and and how you can can use that a little bit but really there's sample data in there that you can play around with um you can also use that during the boot camp um, you don't have to use it today so just something we want to give you um and then for the rest of the presentation, I will be turning over first to my colleague Phoebe, who will, like I said, introduce you to the products um, and talk just a little bit one on one about Elastic. And then my colleague Cami, who's our security advocate, will focus um, specifically on Elastic security, um, talking a little bit about what that means for Elastic, how we work in that space and um, providing some demos. Um, so this is just really um, our way of kind of introducing you to what we do um, and um, how you can use it. and. Um, hopefully, you know, if there's something that you need or you want to learn a little bit more, I will put my email in the chat. You can reach out directly to me. We can discuss how we can support you. So we're excited to be here once again. And um, without further ado, I will turn it over to Phoebe. Hey, everybody. I'm Phoebe. I'm also on the community team. And my role is really um, kind of focused on bringing people together. So a lot of what I do is work with students like yourselves, and um, I also work with just people, practitioners who are using Elastic all over the globe, but primarily in the United States, the western side of the United States. And um, 
that's kind of the interesting thing about elastic is that we are really located all over the world. So there is, um, you know, there are users just crazy all over the place, thousands of people using elastic all over the world. And one of the beautiful things about it is that those folks really like to get together and talk about how they're using elastic and um, the discoveries that they're making with it. And so um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today about how Elastic got started and how what it is, how it works. It looks like a lot of you in chat posted that you weren't familiar with it. So um, one of the things that's kind of sort of interesting about Elastic is that it is fairly complicated. So it is kind of like a Swiss army knife. <laughs> It's, there's a lot of aspects to Elastic. So we'll, we'll go through some of those. Um, but I'll start out by kind of just sharing quickly that Elastic was started by uh, a guy named Shai Bannon. He's our CEO and founder. And he uh, developed uh, an application. Uh, he was just living in a studio apartment in London. And he developed an application to help his wife who's going through a culinary arts program to find uh, and store recipes. And so that simple project started out um, with just a very small, uh, you know, investment of time and working on trying to create something that could, his wife could use. And eventually other people started to contribute to that project. Um, if you don't know what open source software is, uh, definitely just quickly look it up and kind of see. But basically what it is, is it's a project that anybody can contribute to. And so... That's sort of the source and root and foundation of our company is open source software. And um, all those people that contributed to Elastic eventually went on to make it what it is today, which is a really fully functional, fleshed out, amazing uh, search engine. So um, I'm going to go on here. So again, I talked a little bit about the Elastic community. So what this, what the Elastic community really is, is it's it's developers and practitioners, people who are using Elastic, and they want to get together and talk about it. And they do that through meetups. So a lot of the places you'll find us are at meetups. Um, and you can join um, one of our meetup groups that's near you through these links here. Right now, we've moved to doing virtual events. So our America's Region virtual events user group is really the best place to find out all the things that we're doing um, right now. And then we also have a Slack community. This is free and open to everybody. So you can join our Slack community and connect up with other Elastic users, ask questions. And then we also have a YouTube channel. And this is where we, we record all of our meetups. And so that's where we'll post our meetups after they're completed. And if you didn't get a chance to see it or join, you can go back and watch it um, after the fact. So this is um, one of the ways that the Elastic community really thrives is by sharing information and teaching each other. So for example, somebody like who works at Disney, say, might be using the Elastic stack in an interesting way, using a particular query um, to make the streaming uh, services on Disney Plus uh, go faster. So they might share that at a meetup. So this is, meetups are a great place to learn for even uh, for people who are really advanced all the way to beginner. So definitely check those out. And we'll put the links to these into uh, the chat channel, probably towards the end of the presentation. So, okay. So yeah, we got a lot of zeros on the don't know, not familiar with. So what is Elastic? So we're gonna talk a little bit now about the Elastic stack, what that is. Some of the use cases we call the people who use uh, elastic users and or practitioners and we also refer to how they're using it as a use case so it might be something like they're using it for um, reviewing the logs of their website to see how their website performance is well, we'll get into some of those in just a second but um and then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can utilize the tools in our in our Swiss Army knife in for a variety of different solutions. So, so we'll talk about those solutions. And then we'll talk about how you can get started and I'll give you some resources. So um, 
even if you're not familiar with elastic, it's highly likely that you've been using elastic and you didn't know it. So elastic is under the hood on many applications that we use on a regular basis. Uh, so companies like Uber. So if you're searching for a ride and you are trying to connect the ride, the driver to your location, elastic is the service that's driving that technology. Um, and they use something called telemetry to connect you with the driver. And then maybe you need to know where to go to get the best taco at 2 a.m. because the bars just got out. <laughs> so then you want to go and you want to go use Yelp. So Elastic is actually under the hood. And uh, they are driving that search for the restaurant. Um, and then it's also all over the place. So you can see here are some of the some of the people that are using Elastic, uh, Tinder, uh, GitHub, Docker, you're probably familiar with with most of these businesses. So it's not something that you use as an application yourself on your phone. It's under the hood in the applications that you use on a regular basis. Wikipedia is another great example. All right, so let's talk really quickly about what actually is Elastic. So Elastic is a suite of applications and they come together to form the Elastic stack. So um, Elasticsearch is, was built originally from this application that Shai Ban and our, our founder created. And then as it started to, to develop more, then we bought some other businesses to help kind of increase the usability of it and the value of it. So Right now, what happens when you're using Elastic is that there are several different applications inside of Elastic that are working to make um, Elastic function for you. So we'll talk about this first one. So Beats, Beats is a family of lightweight, single purpose data shippers. What that means is that say you have a database full of um, names and addresses. So Beats is gonna take that information and they're gonna package it up and they're gonna send it uh, through to Logstash, which is kind of the next step. Logstash is a server-side data processing pipeline and that ingests data from multiple sources. One could come from Beats and then they transform it and send it to a stash like Elasticsearch. And I think we've just covered Beats and Logstash and now with Elasticsearch, what you're going to get is an analytics engine, and that's where your data is indexed and stored. And then Kibana is a dashboarding tool that lets users take data from Elasticsearch and visualize it with charts and graphs. So I'll kind of explain a little bit more deeply. So Beats are great for gathering data. So what they do is they sit on your servers with containers or they deploy as functions, and then they centralize data in Elasticsearch. So Beats ship out data that conforms um, with something that we have called the Elastic Common Schema. So basically what that is, is it formats your data for you. And then for more processing muscle, they forward that to Logstash, which then parses and transforms the data and gets it in shape to go and get indexed into Elasticsearch. So your data, it gets, it gets packaged up from your server and then it's really fast and it goes through Logstash, which ingests the data from Beats and then parses it for Elasticsearch to index. And these are just, they are, there are specific Beats for different kinds of data. And so these are just a few of those. So for example, file Beats, a lightweight shipper for logs. So if you wanted to kind of take a look at, um, you know, logs can be massive, massive files. So you don't wanna to have to look through all those lines of code. So you will send this on to Beats, it will ship it off to Logstash and then Logstash basically inputs and filters. So this is where we're parsing all of that data. So say you have like, you've got names, addresses, emails, or you've got products, whatever kind of data you're trying to look at. And then you're gonna identify those fields and then you're gonna format them so that they can be easily and quickly indexed. And then that is how Elasticsearch works. You know, so 
what we're looking at is deriving structure um, from this data that we had. So we're using some, some things like Grok. I don't know if many people are familiar with Grok, but if you have like geo coordinates, um, but they're mixed up inside of an IP address, Logstash is the tool that's gonna separate that out and, and make it so that it can be indexed easily. Um, and then again, Logstash feeds that into Elasticsearch and that's where it gets indexed. So Elasticsearch stores data as JSON documents. And what you're looking at here is the console um, of Elastic in Kibana. And this is where you can see right here, we're doing a get request. So that JSON data um, is something that we can easily look through to get what we need. This is part of the search aspect of Elastic. So um, Elastic is a distributed RESTful search and analytics engine. And then once the data is indexed in Elasticsearch, users can run complex queries against their data and use aggregations to retrieve complex summaries. And all that's stored in nodes and clusters. So you can have some redundancy. So for example, if you had a bunch of data in one node, you could copy it and have it in another node. Um, but all of that just means that using what we call an inverted index, it allows us to do really fast full text searches. Um, and an inverted index lists every unique word that appears in a document and it, and it identifies all the documents each word occurs in. So that's part of the reason why Elastic is super fast and why we can get really relevant results when we do a search through Elastic. Um, I'm, how many of you are familiar with JSON documents? Just anybody answer in chat. Just I'm just curious what level of if it's worth it to go into that. Okay, so JSON, <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you, Ethan and Daniel. So JSON documents are, JSON is a universal language that is used um, and it, it's, it's what we use to uh, basically format the data that we're putting into Elasticsearch. And so it's a set of keys. They're like names of fields or properties with their corresponding values. So Booleans, dates, arrays of values, geolocations, other types of data. So the beauty of Elasticsearch is it's like a database, but it's really so much more. You can perform and combine various kinds of searches irrespective of their data type, which includes structured, unstructured, geo and metrics and data types. And you can also perform aggregations. And so what this means is that you can explore trends and patterns. So all of that fairly complicated, but basically, if you just remember that elastic search, the elastic search portion, and if we go back to here, the elastic search portion, which is that middle green bar, that is that is the search engine. And that is what stores the data that we're pulling in. And then Kibana is basically the way that we're gonna take all of that data and we're gonna visualize it and we're gonna display it so that we can kind of pick up patterns and, and things like that. So you can get insights from it. And I'm gonna quickly play, let's see if it'll play this quick video here. So you can see Kibana is um, utilizing um, charts, graphs, things like that. And it has drag and drop features. And this way you can build out um, a visualization of your data um, and through this user interface. And so Kibana is really like the, the way that you would take the data that's in Elasticsearch and then make some sense out of it. Okay, so some of the most common situations people use Elastic for uh, logs and traces. So logs help us troubleshoot application and infrastructure performance like uptime. So say you have an e-commerce site and you want to understand, you know, why your site crashed. 
you would look at your logs and kind of figure out maybe from there what happened. Monitoring and metrics, that's where we take log data files that are usually too huge to make sense of um, unless you structure your data by collecting and aggregating and creating processes to help warn you when things go wrong. That's also known as error monitoring. Security, which is analytics detection and monitoring, which help us define and prevent and respond to, respond to threats, and then search. So search is everything. I mean, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but pretty much you're using search in every application that you have. And it's probably so um, intuitive and embedded that you don't even think about it until you hit a search experience that wasn't positive. And so, um, here's, here's another example of, of a use case. So um, you might be familiar with Call of Duty or World of Warcraft or Overwatch, and um, those are built by Activision Blizzard. And the Elastic Stack is being used by Activision Blizzard to store and analyze log data of gamer and server events. So if the players experience a slowdown during the gameplay, Activision uh, Blizzard uses Elastic to figure out what's causing the issue and resolve it in real time. And then uh, we also are involved with some of NASA's projects. So Elastic is frequently used to gather metrics. And one of our favorite examples is the Mars Curiosity rover. So NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab has the rover send telemetry, sensor, and photo data into the Elastic stack for analysis. And this allows researchers to monitor how hot it is on Mars on an hourly basis, which is pretty cool. And then um, here, with the Elastic Stack, you can also analyze security issues and threats within an environment. So maybe you've used Slack at a hackathon or a student club um, before. What you may not realize is that Slack uses the Elastic Stack in their security operations center to secure communications through their channels. And Tinder, did you know that Elastic Stack is helping people find their match? Uh, Elastic uses geolocations to match people together on Tinder, and Tinder relies on um, the Elastic stack to analyze and predict which people a user will swipe right or swipe left on and when there's a match. So all of these companies are essentially using that Swiss Army knife of Elastic to solve specific problems, specific challenges. And many of them fall kind of under the same umbrella. And so now that you have a sense of kind of how Elastic is used under the hood, I kind of wanted to break out for you how we solve certain kinds of business problems. So here we're looking at again, Beats, Logstash, Alexis, Search, and Kibana. What they do is they help solve problems under these three different umbrellas, search, observability, and security. You may not have heard of some of these terms like observability. In the past, sometimes it was called monitoring, but what we now refer to as observability is really having a single pane of glass where you're really viewing all of your data. So we'll, we'll get into that more specifically in just a second, but what the Elastic Stack can do um, is it can be used for a variety of different things. So application search, Website search, that's where you just have a bar in your website or your application and you're putting it in there just like Wikipedia. When you use Wikipedia, you're using that search bar, that's elastic. Logging and log analytics, infrastructure metrics and container monitoring, application performance monitoring, geospatial data analysis and visualization, security analytics, and business analytics. And so we've kind of tried to simplify this by creating these solutions for search, observability, and security. So the first one that we'll talk about is Elastic Enterprise Search. So it's comprised of two products. One is App Search and the other is Workplace Search. And in App Search, it's just like what you would think. This is a powerful set of APIs and developer tools and they're designed for developers who are building applications and websites. So if you want, if you have an e-commerce site and you want to uh, build in a search so that people can search for a specific product, you would use App Search. Elastic Workplace Search instantly searches across multiple different places that you have internally. This is mostly an internal facing tool. So for example, if you're a healthcare company and you have 
employees who are using, uh, you know, Dropbox and, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, Office Suite, and they are trying to share these things across these platforms and trying to find things, it can be really hard to find a single document or a link that you were looking for. So Workplace Search helps us with that. We'll break it down just a little bit more here. So we mentioned before, we talked about before how search is everywhere, you know, we're using it all the time. And what we want it to do is kind of disappear seamlessly into the background because if you're having a search experience where it's frustrating, you are not going to enjoy that search or use that app again, probably. Um, so we want to do things like we want to, um, you know, we want to have autocomplete. We, we want it to correct the typos if we type in uh, something incorrectly. And then we want our search results to be fast and relevant. So one of the things that we are looking at here with App Search is how we can improve that process for folks who are trying to include a search in their application. So Elastic App Search provides a set of refined APIs and intuitive dashboards and developer tools so developers can easily build a powerful search experience in their apps. And some of these are things like e-commerce sites, geolocation search, internal CRM systems. Here is an example um, where you can see you know, exactly some of those things, you know, Rolling Stone using the search, um, Netflix. So um, we help developers and we try and, and give them a great search experience for their app, but we also want to give them the ability to curate results and take a look at the analytics. So you've got an e-commerce site, and you want to be able to know how many people are searching on a specific term or what are the top purchase items that people bought last month. Um, these kinds of business analytics can really help drive decision making when you've got a product that you're trying to sell. So it's really valuable to have this additional ability to not only have your search results returned very quickly, very relevantly, but also be able to glean insights from them. One example that we like to talk about is Happy Fresh. So Happy Fresh, um, it's an online grocery platform. They use App Search and they were able to improve quite a bit of their business, um, their revenue, and their um, their site stats through using Elastic. So for here, they increase their web traffic, they increase their search traffic, and they decrease their search latency. And Search latency just means how fast the search takes to return a result. So they were very happy with um, including Elastic as part of their, of their search. And so now Workplace Search, as the name suggests, is created for internal operations. Um, one of the best ones that I can give you is actually Elastic itself. So. Elastic is a fully distributed company. So none of us works in an office. We all work from home and we're a global company. So we are all over the globe. I have teammates that live in uh, South Korea. I have teammates that live in Amsterdam, everybody all over the place. And as you can imagine, the amount of communication that we have to use to get business done is enormous. And so we use all different kinds of applications and tools to track our projects, share ideas, and uh, so, you know, I might get an email from somebody that links to a document and I might not remember where that document exists. So having a centralized window pane that I can go to, to search through Google Drive, Dropbox, GitHub, Airtable, Monday.com, it's amazing. It's so much faster than trying to search through each one of those things individually. And so this is the beauty of workplace search. It, it, basically brings together all of those different tools and then allows you to search through all of them simultaneously. And uh, that has been a huge time saver. And as you can imagine, it would be a huge time saver for just about anybody, particularly if you're in an industry where, you know, time is of the essence like security. All right. So again, app search, 
that's for websites and applications, workplace search, more internal facing, searching through various different tools and documents. But before I do that, I'm just gonna pause for a second and just check in with everybody. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and continue. So Elastic as Observability is basically, again, one of those solutions where we are trying to umbrella uh, some of the uses that people use Elastic for. So let's say you have an app that millions of users are using every day, and then suddenly one of your systems goes down and your users are seeing this on their screen. <laughs> Something's not right. <laughs> now that's bad. So the longer your app is down, the more you lose revenue and you'll have dissatisfied customers. So when that happens, we need to quickly find the problem and fix it as soon as possible. But what makes this so difficult for many businesses is that their application depends on a lot of different systems, like the one shown here, where you can see that if you're a site reliability engineer and you're part of a DevOps team and something goes wrong with your app, you have to look through all of this stuff to kind of figure out what's going on. And it might look something like this. Um, you have to make sense of 14 different monitors. So how are we gonna bring all this information together to find the problem? Well, that's exactly what Elastic Observability does. So you go from this to seeing a single pane and this is much more manageable and intuitive. Things are labeled clearly. It's one screen. You're not having to dodge from screen to screen. So you can bring all your logs your metrics, your traces together into a single data store. And this way you have all your information in one place where you can easily zoom in on a problem. And when you do that, you can drill down into those logs even further. So you can really hone what's going on with your application's performance and fix the problem as soon as possible. And I, I kind of want to share like one quick, perfect example of this. So Walmart is a customer of Elastic and they were having a Black Friday sale on t TVs. TVs were on sale on that Black Friday and they were monitoring the sales of those televisions across all of their Walmart stores in America. And they noticed that one particular store in one city was not selling any of these televisions. And they wondered, well, why is that happening? Well, with, with their a bit capabilities using Elastic Observability, they were able to see which store it was. So they called the store and they asked what's going on. And within minutes, they got the answer that it had been labeled incorrectly and they were, and it was not on sale. And so as soon as they were able to fix the sign, sales went up. So that is, and that all happened within a matter of minutes instead of days. So that's another great example of why observing, but having a single pane of glass to be able to view what's happening in your systems really makes it so much easier for the people who have to monitor these things. All right, lastly, the last solution is Elastic Security. And I'm going to touch very briefly on this and then Cami is going to take over and dig more deeply into security. Um, so Elastic provides a win a single pane of glass for security as well. So all the same tools that we've been using all along the Elastic stack, all of those can be used to focus in on security threats. So Elastic takes the data ingestion, indexing and searching and dashboarding and visualization, and then adds security information and event management onto that, which is also called SIM and endpoint security technology. And what that does is it gives us the ability to do threat detection. We can also do compliance and security incident management through the collection and analysis of security events. So in other words, Elastic Security uses a lot of the same functionality that observability and search do, but just for a different purpose. So a security professional might be keeping a close eye on network security logs, firewall logs, host logs, and they used to encounter the same issue that developer operations professionals did. Too many things to look at and keep track of. So it's really hard to make sense of that data when the data is kept in separate data sources. And the longer it takes for you to make sense of the data, the longer it'll take you to protect your company against security threats. So Elastic Security Solution brings all of these data sources into a single data store so you can search and analyze through a single pane of glass and get that data when you need it and be able to react off of it quickly. So all of that, again, goes back to that Elastic Stack. 
And that is pretty much where we're gonna pause on talking about elastic and talk about how you can actually get started with this. So I, um, just a little bit about me. I was in a tech boot camp. I did a software engineering six month program uh, for uh, full stack web development. And at that time, they weren't really teaching us about various different kinds of databases. We got one that we got to work with and that was mostly um, just PostgreSQL. So one, when I got out of my program and I started learning about various different things, one of the things that I learned about was Elastic and I wish that I'd known about it more as I was getting started at the beginning of my technology career because it is so versatile and so useful. I had a tiny little application that I made that I incorporated Elastic into as the search. And that experience helped me in other jobs. So one of the reasons why we like to go out and talk to students about utilizing Elastic is that this is um, using it, playing around with it, will give you valuable experience that you can put on your resume. So Stephanie mentioned that you do get a free trial um, for 30 days of Elastic on Cloud. And so let's talk a little bit about how you can deploy Elastic. So we've talked about the Elastic Stack and the three solutions that are built on top of it. And um, Elastic happily gives you lots of different ways you can deploy the Elastic Stack. One is self-managed. So that just means that you can download the Elastic Stack on your computer, unzip it, and then run it on your environment. We also allow you to do this on cloud and you can utilize Elastic and Kibana as a service and you can use all of our solutions and core capabilities. Um, but what the cloud does is it does the heavy lifting. Um, it provisions the host for you, it manages the security, it makes sure your data is all backed up. And so you don't have to worry about a lot of the things that you would have to think about when you're um, doing self-managed and uh, that way you can just focus on your project and it is incredibly fast. I mean, within five minutes, you can have an app up and running. So then there are other orchestration products um, and this is kind of like an intermediate solution between completely self-managing your stack and going the hosted service route. This is more typically for companies who can't use cloud for regulatory reasons. Um, but with this option, you could take the same software that we use to power Elastic Cloud and install it in your environment so you get the benefits of cloud, but on your own environment. And again, you've been given that free access to the 30-day trial. Um, and so I, I definitely recommend getting in there, digging in, using it to play around. Um, and there are a variety of resources that we have uh, for you that we can... Let's go to the next slide. There we go. Um, that we can help to get you started. So launching your first deployment on Elastic Cloud, basically uh, I would recommend watching this video. Um, and then if you're interested in trying out the dashboarding capabilities of Kibana, I recommend reading the quick start guide. And for a full and thorough introduction to the Elastic Stack, I would definitely review a series that we've created called the Beginner's Crash Course. And this was made with total beginners in mind. So definitely check that out. That's on our YouTube channel. And I've linked to the series here. And if you're curious about utilizing App Search for a project, we recently held a meetup uh, where we show you how to use React and App Search to create a super fast application. So more tutorials, meetups, interesting use cases about Elastic can be found on our YouTube channel and the Elastic website under the learn section. So I definitely would recommend checking out the Elastic website. And of course, we are always here to help you. So if you encounter any issues, we'll put some links into the chat and just sec for our discuss forum. That's where technical questions are great uh, to go if you encounter issues. And then also our Slack community on uh, the Elastic Slack community. So again, um, definitely utilize the, what's out there. When you're getting started, it can be very confusing and daunting, but there are a ton of people out there who've been in the same place and there's already so much information out there that you can take advantage of. So I really recommend digging into some of these resources. 
And that is pretty much it for me. I'll stop sharing now. And if anybody has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, we'll move on to Cami's presentation. Awesome. Thanks, Phoebe. Um, so hopefully, yeah, that gave everyone kind of an intro to Elastic. Um, I know it's a lot of information. Uh, we are always still in the process of learning exactly um, everything that Elastic does. Uh, but now Cami Lewis is here. She's a security advocate with um, the community team, and she is going to speak specifically to Elastic security. Um, so kind of uh, talk a little bit more in, in your realm of study. And so I will turn it over to Cami. All right, thanks, Stephanie. And thanks, Phoebe, for that awesome explanation. You, you do such a good job of explaining a very complex topic so clearly. Thank you. Um, can you all see my screen? Just the- Yes, I can. Here? Okay. <clears throat> so Phoebe already touched on this, but just to reiterate, we are going to be diving into the Elastic Security Solution in the upper right-hand corner, which is built upon the stack. So just briefly, I just want to um, familiar, uh, make you all familiar with who the Elastic Security community is, since you're all studying security specifically. Um, if you look in the bottom right hand corner of this graph in particular, I just want to point out a special subset of our ecosystem. Um, they are the free and open security community. And you maybe have heard of Security Onion. They're pretty popular. Um, hey, Cami, I don't mean to interrupt. Just one of the students said your audio is just a little bit quiet. Okay. If you're able to turn that up just a little bit. I'll try speaking just a little louder too. Is that better? Sounds fine to me. OK. So. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, security Onion, you've maybe heard of them. Rock NSM is another open source security project built on Elastic, um, was a soft elk. All of these open source projects are sort of leading the ecosystem with emerging security work. So I definitely encourage you to go check those out on GitHub if you're not familiar with the open source projects um, right now in security. And so let's dive a bit more deeply into Elastic Security then. So um, Phoebe mentioned this earlier, but Elastic Security is made up of our SIM, which is Security Information and Event Management, plus our Endpoint Security Solution. And this, this is integrated into one platform. So the job of protecting the enterprise has become increasingly complex and complexity is the enemy of security. So Elastic um, is really tailored for complexity in the security space. The Elastic SIM experience provides a whole new comprehensive security operations solution designed to support multiple users, multiple use cases, and terabytes of data. So it, it really um, hones in on the complexity issue. In addition, historically, security teams and endpoint IT operation teams have lived in completely separate worlds. Um, they never spoke the same language before. So with the combination of SIM and endpoint together, these worlds now combine. And this gives a search experience um, in SIM that can be applied as a prevention on the endpoint, for example, and will We'll dive deeper into that in just a moment. So just to give you a, a frame of reference of you know, how Elastic got into the security space, um, we released our first version of the SIM app in June of 2019. So we're pretty new to security. We've been doing this for um, just not even two years yet. So we've made quite a lot of progress since then though. Um, at a high level, what we've done since then is we added a new application in Kibana called the SIM app. Um, it is now called Elastic Security, as I mentioned, because we added endpoint security. It's a single user interface that allows you to manage security events from different log source types. Um, different security data types and 
um, also protections that come with the endpoint security solution. We added a detection engine. We added a lot of out of the box content so that when you deploy our solution, um, you don't have to create security rules, for example, They're, they are already there for you. In October of last year, we joined forces with a company called Endgame and they are the endpoint security solution that I keep mentioning. Um, we have since integrated their solution with our product and that is what is now the, the Elastic Security Solution. 7.9 is the first release that includes endpoint security functionality. So if you want to play around with that functionality, just be sure that you have one of the newer releases when you download. Um, everything we do is in the open, including the development of our detection rules. So you can actually go out into GitHub and I'll show you that later, but you can actually go out there and contribute to our detection rules if you want. Our research engineers develop all of them in the open in GitHub in collaboration with community contributors, just like yourself. You could be one of the people that helps contribute to our um, detection rules and they do make it into our releases as permanent um, content. So that's really cool. So these are our three focus areas, eliminate blind spots, stop threats at scale, and arm every analyst. So I'm not gonna go over each of these in detail, but I do want to point out the MITRE attack sub techniques and the third category there under arming every analyst. Um, I highly recommend that you become familiar with MITRE attack if you're not already. Um, it's something that you are very likely going to be using in the job market if it's, if it's not already on your radar. Um, just out of curiosity, are any of you currently working in perhaps an internship or a part-time job in security, perhaps a full-time job? Feel free to chime in the chat if you are. Everyone is just students for right now. I can't actually see the chat right now for some reason. All right, well, I will try to touch a bit more on how you might be using this in the job market once you get there. So eliminate blind spots. Um, when we first started working on security about two years ago, we noticed that many of our community members had been using Elastic for security without any out of the box functionality designed for security. So we decided to double down on this and create that content for them and that functionality specifically for the security analysts working in the SOC, so the Security Operations Center. And that's often where you might start out your career as an entry level security analyst working in a SOC. Um, so that's something to become more familiar with if you're not already. We have three areas um, of focus, as I mentioned, but Elastic doesn't restrict the volume, variety, or age of data that you can bring into the stack, which is really important. This is a key differentiator for us because fundamentally security is a data problem. And so when it comes to the challenge that people face with so much security data, they need to be looking for a needle in a haystack, but they need to be looking in the entire haystack. So companies often run into the problem where they just have part of the haystack, but they're looking for the needle in just a portion of the data, but they need all of it to be able to find the needle. So it's, it's critically important that you have the visibility into all of your data especially today in a world where perimeter is completely gone. Um, we're having to expand our security scope to include things like SaaS applications and cloud infrastructure. So that, that perimeter is really gone. You really need the visibility into all of your data as a security analyst. Stopping threats at scale. Again, this is the second focus area. 
we wouldn't be a security product if we didn't tell you there was a problem and tell you how to how to stop it. So one of our core goals at Elastic Security is to bring um, what's called the mean time to detect and the mean time to remediate. So basically the average time to detect and average time to remediate. We wanna bring those to zero. And to do that, we need always on detection and always on prevention. And just not for the known threats, but for the unknown threats as well. So often in the security world, um, as an entry level analyst, you're looking at alerts that are coming into your information management system, your SIM, but you're also looking for things that you don't know about as well. And so those are the unknown threats. So we think about how can we use a combination of behaviors? How can we use machine learning? How can we use signatures and detections to find the various scopes of attacks? Uh, our latest release has around 400 plus detection rules, and they are all aligned to the MITRE attack matrix. So again, if you're not familiar with the MITRE attack matrix, I highly, highly recommend Googling that. Um, that's a company out of DC that created that matrix, and it's heavily used in the security industry today. A second, my screen's not advancing for some reason. Sorry about that, it got hung. Okay. And then the third focus area, arming every analyst. Um, we want to empower the junior analysts, especially. So the tier one analysts, which is the entry level jobs that you all may be looking at. Uh, they're just starting their careers in security. So we've invested a lot of effort into making this easier for those analysts to learn our product. Um, we want them to be efficient in their investigations with the shortest learning curve possible. And this again, I already mentioned um, the MITRE attack sub technique but I just wanted to show you um, detection rules that use MITRE ATT&CK just to give you a visual example. So Elastic Security is one of the first security solutions on the market that does support MITRE ATT&CK techniques in our detection rules. So that's also a key differentiator for us. And you've probably all heard of the sunburst attack. If you haven't, the solar winds is another name. Um, I'm sure you've probably all heard of this. If not, maybe quickly Google it as well. But this is probably the most substantial widespread attack of our time, to be honest. Um, and Elastic came out with some detections within, within hours of this attack with, uh, within hours of you know finding out that this was occurring. So companies that are still dealing with solar winds will still be dealing with this probably for two to three years to come. The fallout is expensive. Um, they can use elastic now to protect themselves. Let's dive just a bit more into endpoints. I just want to show you what that looks like. So as I said, one of the things that sets Elastic apart is the, um, the endpoint security solution that we've integrated into our free and open security solution. It is available in our basic um, subscription tier. So you will be able to use this when you download our product. So we're not just a STEM, we're a SIM and endpoint security in one. Again, that's a key differentiator for us. And I just wanna show you a little bit more about what the endpoint feature looks like. So if you enable the endpoint security agent, Elastic Agent will download the module, which will give you additional insight. It'll give you deep data visibility directly from the kernel. 
gifts, you'll have insight into things like processes, networks, file access activity, as well as things like DNS and DLL for Windows, for example, uh, Mac OS, also Linux as well. In our later releases, we also have free malware prevention for both Windows and Mac. So while you're observing the infrastructure as an analyst, you can also enable protection, which is a cool feature. And this is the new visualization interface. This is what endpoint security looks like in a visual format. So whenever you look at an alert generated by the detection engine, the alert contains some type of endpoint data where there there's going to be a parent-child relationship. So you can now visualize that relationship. You can visualize what's happening with those endpoints. And then you can take some sort of action on those endpoints to stop some sort of malicious activity if it's occurring. Um, again, I mentioned detections, 400 plus detection rules out of the box. You can create your own custom rules. Um, that's what this is showing here. You can also create exceptions and thresholds, just a lot of custom um, features that is really helpful when you're working as an analyst. And this is just showing you how you would add an exception or a threshold. I'm not going to dig into this too much. This is very much in the weeds. Um, very complicated stuff that, that you all can worry about later when you get in the job market. Um, so equal, I wanted to touch on this really quick. Equal is, um, it stands for event query language. It's the new language that we've added natively to Elasticsearch. We've added it specifically for security use cases. So it's more powerful than Kibana query language. Um, which is what Elasticsearch uses. And you'll see that once you download the product. Um, Equal allows you to look at the sequence of events as well as the, the relationship between events. So that's really useful when you're, when you're working in the security world. Elastic Common Schema, um, Phoebe touched briefly on this earlier, but I just wanted to mention it again. So you need to be able to uniformly examine your security data no matter what format it is in. So that's why we, we created ECS. So it defines a common set of field names, a common set of data types for all data that's ingested into Elasticsearch. Um, it's an open source spec that we've adopted across the entire Elastic stack, including the Elastic SIN. And just to give you a visual of how ECS works, so you can see several um, data types on the left, which all refer to the same type of data, which is source IP. And then ECS on the right normalizes the data into one field name, which is source.ip. So when you're searching through thousands of logs, millions of events, uh, you want to be able to search just one type of normalized data field, which is source.ip, that, source that and that makes your life a lot easier as a security analyst. All right, so that's elastic security at a high level, as high as I can keep it anyways. <laughs> Let me stop there and see if there's any questions and then we'll move on to a short demo. And are we okay on time, Stephanie, or does this end now? Yeah, no, I believe we're okay, Randall. I think your class goes a little longer than an hour. Is that correct? Yeah, we're okay on time. Okay, great. Okay, I'll keep the demo really short. So let me just share really quick. All right, so I just want to show you our Elastic Security product very briefly. 
Um, so when you download the product um, and you go to the elastic security option here on the left and you click on overview or detection posts, any of these, these are all security administrative options. So let's start with overview and then I'll take you through some of the other screens as well. Maybe. For some reason, it's not catching up to me. All right, there we go. There's just a bit of a lag with Zoom for some reason. So this is the, the overview pages I mentioned that you'll see first. Um, before I get into the meat of the sim, I just want to explain a few things about this page. There is quite a lot of valuable information here that's often overlooked. Um, so first of all, on the left here, if you're an analyst working in a SOC, this is probably the first place you would go. Um, when you come in for your shift, you would see the cases that have been worked on throughout the night or throughout the day, depending on which shift you're on. Um, you would see the timelines that have been saved. This is gonna be all of the investigative work that your SOC team has been working on that you would pick up and run with. Security news is also really helpful. This is a place where you can see um, information that's coming directly from our security re research team. You can see various news articles, um, things that are gonna be really relevant to your day-to-day -day job and you're not gonna have to leave and go search for this stuff on our website, for example, or on other websites. You'll just have everything that's relevant right here in the sim for you. We've got several high level charts here, detection, alert trend, um, external alerts. So the detection alerts, these are events which Elasticsense has detected as being potentially malicious. So again, this is gonna be a place where you would start your day. The external alerts, this is um, any events that you're shipping in from various log sources from other security vendors. Um, so for example, if you're familiar with Zeek or Bro, if you're familiar with Suricata, different security vendors that you may be using in your environment, um, you're gonna wanna bring in that data as well. And this would be a, just a high level chart that you could start to view it there. Events is a breakdown of the events being seen in our stack. You can change the stacking of any of these. Um, charts as well. So they're very customizable. Host and network. This is just showing you a, a breakdown of the beats data. Again, PB briefly mentioned beats earlier and what they do. So I won't go into that, but we are using packet beat, file beat, and winlog beat right now, as well as the, the endpoint security solution. So let me just quickly show you some of these other user interfaces. So detections, again, I, I talked quite a bit about detections. We have 400 plus detection rules. This is where you're gonna view all of your malicious activity. So this is really the heart of our SIM. Um, you can manage your detection rules here. You can create custom rules as well. This is where you would do that, creating a new rule, importing rules, Perhaps you're working for a SOC team that already has rules that you want to import from somewhere. So there's really just a lot of functionality. Um, so let's see what else I wanna show you. Back to detection. Again, I mentioned this is the heart of our SIM. This is where you're gonna do most of your investigative work as a security analyst. And so I want to show you timeline very briefly. Timeline is how you're gonna search your security data. So let's just say this first event here, this is, this is looking a little odd to you and you want to investigate this more. 
timeline is really great because you can just simply drag and drop. So let's drag this up here. It's going to search all of your data sets, all of your logs, everything that you've indexed in Elasticsearch. And just within seconds, you can see it pulled up all of this data. So timeline is the heart of your investigative work as a security analyst. Again, I said you can drag and drop any information into the timeline. Let me close that. Let's move on to hosts really quick, just in the interest of time. So for the host view, we gather as much metadata from the host as possible, and that's the job of the Beats. So there's a couple of Beats processors that do this work. Um, they're on by default. So typically, as soon as you install the Beat, you already have this level of rich information, which is really nice. We're collecting the operating system info, as you can see about these hosts. Um, we're collecting the cloud provider data, the IP addresses, the MAC addresses. We're collecting every single IP address for every interface so that there is not a single host that can hide from you. Um, that's really important as a security analyst you need to be able to see all of your hosts. As I mentioned earlier, that visibility issue with security, being able to see all of your data so that you can find that needle in the haystack. Um, just there's some other views here. I won't go into these too much in detail. You know, authentications that speaks for itself. You know, that's your, your login information, uncommon processes. That's looking at what's uncommon for that time period versus um, machine learning, for example, which is another feature of our product. That's learning gradual, gradually over time. So that's sort of a useful, uh, a useful tab, this uncommon processes as a security analyst. This one gets used quite a bit. Anomalies, as I mentioned, machine learning, this is where your anomalies will show up. Um, I, I'm not going to go into machine learning today. That's a premium feature, but that is something we can talk about later if there's interest in diving deeper into machine learning. Events and external alerts. This is just the raw data that you'll see in various charts throughout the sim. So this allows you to drill down into the log data. You can, again, you can drag any of this information into the timeline to investigate something. So as an example, you know, this destination IP is fishy to you. Drop it in, drop it into the timeline and you're gonna drill down into every log event in your entire data set that has that destination IP into in it within seconds. You can see we, we pulled 92,000, no, 920,000 events within just a couple of seconds. So that's, that's really one of the differentiators for Elastic. When you get out into the security workforce, you will probably encounter other products where you, you, know, you run a query and then go get a cup of coffee and come back because it's still running. Um, the differentiator for Elastic is that within seconds, your query returns relevant results. Let's just quickly look at network. We have a pew pew map here. This is different than the typical security map that you might see on a big screen in a SOC environment. Um, it doesn't just look pretty, it's actually useful. So that's another thing that sets us apart. You can drill down into these icons. You can drag and drop the source IP, for example, into your timeline. You can do work directly from this map. So that sets Elastic apart as well. And again, more information that's drilling down into your log event data. This is a pretty useful screen for security analysts when they're doing their investigative work as well. We have the DNS view, HTTPS, TLS. Also, if you're a network 
engineer or a network analyst working on the on the network side of the house, they often will use this screen as well. So this is not just for security analysts. The great thing about this product is it's, it's easy to understand. We break the flows down for you. So anyone, even if they don't have security background, they can still understand and use this technology. And then timelines, I briefly mentioned timelines and cases. Uh, so we, we talked about the timeline here. You can save all of your work that you do here for an investigation. And this is where it would show up if you saved it is within this screen. And then a case, a case is just a, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, a case. It's real life. Oh, God. All right, real life here. <laughs> Again, <laughs> my son got away from my nanny. All right, a case is just a timeline worked on by multiple people. So what this allows you to do is have multiple people working on one investigation at one time. If you, if you created a case here, you can add uh, markdown text into this description. So you can add, for example, a, a threat hunting playbook if that was relevant to this particular case. So that's a really nice feature as well. Um, I just created the case here so you can see. And then your case would show up in the cases as well as the overview page for anyone that's coming in on the, on the next shift work for you um, to take over as a SOC analyst. So that's a very, very high level um, of the Elastic SIM plus endpoint security interface. 